so if you're new to my website and everything, I might go over some of the everything here, but I'm just going to kind of cement down some points about everything. So the letter, if you watch this whole read, watch my old videos. So if you look at my blogging history, you can see I didn't know about this letter for um, quite a while after I'd already owned it. So I bought it not knowing about this letter. I might have known a little bit. I might have read it on commercials blog or someone's blog. Like she has so much information. I she just, all these people have worked really hard. Kind of like William B. McCarl, an incredible article here. Um, but he has this whole theory about major and possibly painting the forward facing painting. I'll pull up that 1926. There we go. This is where he starts running with this theory. So if you watch my last video, I, I show like the last person that was like 10 when Joseph Smith died that saw him, last saw him when he was 10 or 11, um, had died before this. So no one was alive that had seen Joseph Smith from life or it knew much of anything. So, um, and then you've got this photo of a painting with this whole sworn statement saying this is a true picture and it's a really bad copy of Lewis Ramsey's painting. But if it was a really good painting that really looked like a man and it was photographed, it there would probably be blogs saying that that's a photo of Joseph Smith, you know? So anyway, this is 1926, but you've got all these statements from 1885, Virginia as well, saying it's David Rogers, but um, it's sort of cementing this here, but um, he, he starts running with this theory of majors because he's like, oh, and he even knows this. He knows, McCarl knows that, um, you know, he's from England um, and he doesn't come to go into the additional. There we go. He talks about this in here. I'm not going to read his whole scholarly article. He leaves England in 1844. He doesn't get there until 1845. He doesn't step ground in America at all after Joseph Smith died, and he's from England. But this, this is um, Saints Herald. This is the reason Joseph Smith III moved to Plano was to be the editor of the Saints Herald. So this is printed in Plano, Illinois. Do I say that down here on the bottom? We can. I'll show you some other pages where it shows the beginning of that. Uh, but you, you can just, I'll let you do that if you have any doubts here. Um, but the editor is Joseph Smith III. This is August. Um, sorry. August 15th, 1870. July 1879. And gets it's copyrighted. June, I guess, is when he was writing that letter trying to get J.A. Robinson. So once I found this, then I understood, oh, Jane A. Robinson took photos of the painting. But he gives details of the painting. He says the painting was painted by a, a photographer, a painter from New York. He's not from New York. He's from England. Uh, when his dad was 36 years old. His dad died at 38 in 1844. And he... If he was alive, he would have been 39 in 1845, not 36. There's no way Major could have painted him in 1842 when his when Joseph Smith Jr. was 36. He actually turned 37 in December 1842. He was born in December 1805, Joseph Smith Jr. was. Major didn't paint that. But I don't think William B. McCarl had access to this. This is an RLDS newspaper, the Organized Church of Christ Latter-day Saints. Um, I didn't know much about them as I'm studying this, you know, I didn't think they were bad or anything. I just, I didn't have any reason to research it or know anything growing up in Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints. We just know very little bit, bits and pieces. We don't talk smack or anything. Um, we would do like FAMP Church History, um, where we would just travel out there. I didn't, but other people had gone to Missouri and just checked out them and just knew that they believed that through the family line, it was the prophet, except for their most recent prophet, is not directly related to Joseph Smith Jr. at all. But um, before him, it, the whole line was always directly related through Joseph Smith Jr. So, um, 
and Joseph the third was the oldest so they just chose him and brought him out there and um he just felt like oh okay I'll do this you know he just felt good about it and chose to do it um and so he became their prophet and president but he talks about being you know in 1860 I knew 1866 to 1881. I'll give you kind of a link to their website. Right there. This is the Community Christ. So they used to be reorganized churches, Christ Latter-day Saints. They changed the name. But that is that is the church that Joseph Smith III ran. And so they do explain, you know. This is the first time I'm looking at their website is when I saw that. 1860, 1881, and so I do quote page numbers for the memoirs of Joseph Smith III. I just don't have links to that. Um, you'd have to go buy the book. Simple as that. It's like $30. If you go to their website, I think it's a little bit less than what I paid. But I bought an original from the 70s, though, so it's like a newer published. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, but, yeah, I don't think that... jumping around here, but I'll go ahead and open up the, anyway, but I don't think William B. McCarl just knew about this. You know, I don't think he knew that not only did, he's just trying to say, oh, well, Junior F. Wells doesn't know what he's talking about. I think it was William Major, even though Junior F. Wells has, is 1885, and then these people are way, way later. There we go. Um, I need to be able to find that in Chronicles. <laughs> but he's got this 1926. You know, no one's alive anymore that knew Joseph Smith. So it's not a good source. Whereas this is a good source because this is Joseph Smith the third. Okay. He knew. So everything he says supports Junius F. Wells, who states that, you know, I've got the whole timeline here, but I'll just go down. Um, but yeah, just sort of like a quick rundown for people that might not know everything. So just, it, it wasn't William Major. I'm just going to, I'll just close that out. Um, Deseret News, 1885. You, even they, as I'm reading through this, I don't, I think they knew that that was just a portrait painting. And the whole, everyone says that, all the scholars say that today. So, um, but David Rogers was from New York. He painted Hiram, 1842, so that everything lines up according to what Joseph Smith III said. Junius F. F. Wells said David Rogers was the artist, so that's why you've got Joseph Smith papers saying it was just David Rogers. Because it was. Um, but I'm just going to go through this. So this is 2020, so up until then, I really didn't think that my picture was the daguerreotype Joseph III talked about. Like, I bought this not even knowing about the letter. I just knew it matched the photo. So I was just like, oh, they just, it, 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 it photography existed. You got more than one photo taken. Maybe someone else has the daguerreotype because I went, I thought it was important for it to, to find evidence that it was always a paper photograph because it was in the correct perspective. I'm like, if it, this was a daguerreotype, it'd be in the wrong perspective then it wouldn't match the death mask, you know? But um, when I talked to this guy, he talked, told me about daguerreotype reversing prisms. He told me about how they would take daguerreotypes of daguerreotypes. And he said that actually would explain why this is really dramatic high contrast. Like he can tell that this is a high contrast. So actually the original of this would be lighter and you would really tell this guy has much lighter hair than that. Whereas actually if you did black and white of his artwork, painted of Joseph Smith it's almost as dark like his hair wasn't Swedish blonde he wasn't a platinum blonde at all so but you know the person that printed this lived here he was a photographic artist in 1860 but you've got this journal entry in the fall 1860 this is page 80 to 82 of memoirs of Joseph Smith III He's just a few miles from Millington, but he's on the Fox River. There's a region in which George A. Smith and William O. Clark 
had labored extensively. For, to, for all I know, he was across the river. He might have directly been, he might have been, you know, I don't know. But he traveled around. He didn't, it took him several days to get there. He didn't just stay in one spot. But, um, but he talks about George Abler Smith. And George Abler Smith was in Newark in 1844. You'll see that in the Joseph Smith papers. And then I just have figured out the whole history of J.S. Bibbins and how his father um, knew M.S. Smith. So I didn't know that until several months in. Um, but yeah, I have a whole breakdown of that here, actually. And then I talk about... So I'm going to add more pages and really expound on my website a little bit more as I have in the past. So if you're new to this, you can just watch some of my old videos. You can look at my old website, which is still up and running. Um, but we've got this letter where the art ph photographer is named by Joseph Smith III. And I think, uh, unfortunately, some LDS scholars just think he just lied. <laughs> or that he didn't know what he was talking about. You know, It's just like half of them think that and half of them do think that he really meant a daguerreotype. Because why would... This is painting 1842, actually. His dad was 36 in 1842, but he says 1843. He's he's going blind at this point. He only lives four more years, and so I know at some point he goes blind. He's just getting quite a bit. Well, he's having a lot of health problems. So for him to be off a little bit on a year, I you just got to give him some credit. But um. But that portrait, he's talking about this. He this is the photo. This is the photo he sent in 1910 saying this was painting when my dad was alive. And so William B. McCarl trying to say it was postmortem is debunked in 1910. It's debunked in by Joseph Smith III a second time. In August 1879, it's debunked by Junius F. Wells. And William Major could not have painted Joseph Smith from life. He didn't show up in Navi until 1845. And Joseph Smith III and Junius F. Wells both say the artist was from New York. It wasn't done by Major. I'm seeing so many blogs and so many people getting hung up because this is such a well, really, it is a well done scholarly article. But so is the Joseph Smith papers, which they now have modern technology where they can read that newspaper that they sent to some people that are arguing with them and saying that their copy, like Kim Marshall's picture, I'm not going to put on here or analyze, but I have analyzed it and it's, it's perfectly the same as this and other people on some, you'll see some news articles her oldest one she even posts it um but they even on that news station they state that this professional artist that works i think for utah state said that he analyzed it and he said it her her photo perfectly matches carter's photo and so carter did meet up with joseph smith the third but junior sub wells knew and talked to carter and said this is a photo of the painting and so what i've come to conclude was that i just think 1860, the picture looked like mine, but I think by 1879, that's 19 years. You know, J.S. Bibbins was a pho photograph photographer in 1860. Um, and yeah, this carte de visites were invented, patented in 1850, so they, year 1860, they were around. It threw me off when I first bought this. Like, I didn't even know it was a carte de visite when I first bought it. I thought it was a daguerreotype, and I was, it wasn't until I, like, I paid for it, and then I looked at the eBay listing again, and it said CDV, and I'm like, what's that? Like, I, I just was so ignorant about all this. Like, I've done photography, I've studied art, but all I knew was it matched the photograph, but all the information of supportive stuff, you know, that Emma Smith knew the photographer's dad, um, it matches, but... And this is sort of the facial analysis on my page you can look at. Um, I think it's incredible. I think the eyebrows are incredible. So I've done it both ways where I've done, this is actually the outline of the death mask that I put on here, up here. That's how well, and I've done it the other way. In most of my videos I've outlined this and put that there. The only thing that's slightly different is this comes up slightly higher, okay? And this eyebrow, it's it's hard to see, but you see, you do see it though. If you mark this and put this right there, it's the same. 
and I, I see in some of Maudsley's artwork that this eyebrow is half gone. But there's one, in some, one of his paintings, the eyebrow is half gone. And so you do see that down here. Um, and if I could find the original of that, I can't. I can't find who owns. Whoops, way too far, sorry. Do I not throw all of Marley? There we go. Some places on the internet I found this where there's like his eyebrow ends halfway through his iris. You know, like, and this is a dramatic side part, but they're saying it's so Joseph Smith. Sometimes it's pointed that way, other times it's pointed this way. On the church's website, he's facing this way. Um, but I, no one knows. I've asked the top people that know everything, and nobody knows who owns this. It's not the most sought after one. He doesn't look great. You know, he has the least amount of hair and he's missing half of his eyebrow. Whereas you can see his eyebrow does extend past, you know, almost to his hairline. It's, it is kind of light, but he's got some eyebrows and they are not super, you know, super thin, but not super, super dark. Um, but as far as width wise, they go quite a ways. But I think even in my picture, when I've compared the eyebrow hairs right here, I mean, you do see that there's a break. They're not, they are kind of thin. I don't know, but this is um, Benjamin West who painted it from life and said super thick eyebrows. You know, it just, eyebrows change, sideburns change. And I might have shaved his eyebrows one day. I just don't know might have shaved them guys would do that today and I think back then they might have just taken that razor just sort of they don't want to be in a brow I don't know so that distance could change but I definitely see this the hair thins out right there hair thins out right there hair thins out right there um of course this particular Rogers painting it just is super thin and goes thick so that looks more like the spiritus picture but on the death mask that's where you're really seeing this you know but eyebrows do kind of get thicker as you get older so maybe in those two years his eyebrows change but it definitely matches the death mask really 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 well see that angle see it's even more of a sharper angle up it, it, this is not his eyebrows not going like that on the death mask his eyebrows going droom, droom, droom. but I draw faces and I wax eyebrows I've <laughs> been told, you know, eyebrows, their sisters are not identical twins. They're going to not match, but especially with men that have been beat up and tarred and feathered. You know, um, but I don't know if I made a video, but this is kind of new. I kind of wonder, looking at my picture, this is upping the contrast, like you don't see any buttons or hint of buttons. I think it's possible you could have that on. Of course, you don't see exactly that, but as far as the lapel, definitely especially here. I'm looking right there. But I have superimposed the outline of this and gone boom, boom, and like that angle is like the same. From the painting, I don't know, this is a little bit different from the, but the RLDS painting I didn't put on here. Um, the vest though is, is still, I think that's the most incredible thing. I got permission to put that on my website, so you can analyze that. But if you want to see a really pretty good so the church's website, just on the church's website, has so much supportive information to my photo. But it is a striped. And you can see here, they got a really good clear. See, I couldn't get anything this clear when I went there. But um, you can see it's more satiny, and you're just sort of seeing a sheen there. Whereas I can kind of see this could be a sheen, or it could, it could be bent, but I think it is this wavy design which you can kind of see here on the vest that it's sort of got this going on right there and then you can sort of see that right there Oops. but in person um, I could never see this particular stitching being more inside I think they were stitching it more on the outside of that lapel of the vest that unique stitching I think they kind of kept this bare so you see more of the stripes 
but you see something right there that really could be that flower this looks like it's coming up like just look at the design of that and look at this black so they got this pretty flower right there but they also got this black flower it was hard to catch it was hard to get that in clear but especially in person actually photos of my cell phone are a little bit better but it's almost like this swoop that looks exactly like that and then it's sort of got this snake thing going on which I always I don't know if you go back to the juvenile instructor this guy kept talking about this snake what's that snake thing in the picture he didn't say what he was looking at but when you look at this vest it sort of looks like a snake thing so I don't know if he's some weird eyes that he could see he was talking about that if he could see something on the vest I thought he had a snake stitched on his vest. He, it looks more like a flower, but it has this really dramatic, wavy design right there. So, I mean, that's like a real... Sh sh I guess someone could see that and think that looked snake-like. I don't know. He spent, like, tears analyzing it, but... Um, and they just got convinced of something else, but... But I do think looking at the artwork is supportive. I think seeing that's where the nasal, like that's where his nose starts jutting out, is about right there. That's about right there. You know, that's where his orbital bone is. It starts jutting out. You know, and it sort of... Eye color. Eye color. You know, you don't see color in my picture, but these are made of lighter eyes, and definitely all these paintings show blue eyes and lighter eyes. It's not brown. Um, and his hair's receded to there. There's it's farther than where the plaster is. Like you don't even you don't know how far back his hair receded because the plaster hits right there. But these look more when you're analyzing it straight from the top. I'm thankful to Karina for taking a photo of this, but you can see these are more stragglers. This is not thick hair that, but people think that his hairline went to here. But even right here, it's just sort of, his hairline's really there, like. But this is some thicker hair, but this could just be the hair that he grew longer because he had less hair on this side of his head. That's my theory. Um, but I talk about hairline outline. This, again, this is the biggest thing that meant that I think the juvenile instructor, I think they just saw that hairline and were like, no, uh-uh. And then in some of my oldest videos, I would take the outline of this guy's face, plop it on the death mask. But um, on my website right now, I'm showing different analysis. Eyebrows and the outline, I've taken the death mask and put it on there. Um, I've done it both ways. I've been studying this since 2017. Um, but if you just take this, it doesn't quite match. But I do think camera distortion, since the outline is farther away, camera distortion could have made it look a little bit different. Um, also, just the process of making the death mask. It, it seems to not match as you look at this, if you watch the video. But all I do is just make this bigger and then just the shape. Like, not changing the dimensions, if that makes sense. Just the size. Just expanding the size of the outline, it's just about perfect. And that was the only thing that ever stumped me. So you'll just see, boom. All of a sudden, just that shape is really, really good. And this just didn't go farther back on his face. It hits the chin really well. And so these are things that I noted and mentioned. Again, if you want to see the vlogging journey. But this is going to keep changing because I want to put more about, um, there's just so many aspects to this. Like I, I could write something very long about it. Something might come out that's like super, super, super short. So, but at least it'd be something. And so if, if I, if we're able to do something, have something come out, you know, maybe people that have access to more records kind of like, who do you think you are? You know, if you've ever watched that show and they find all these uh, uh, records that aren't online or there's so many things I don't have access to, especially I'm doing J.S. Bebbins. But you can see, boom, 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 every video that I felt like putting in here. I don't know if it's literally every video from my YouTube channel because not all of them are about the photo. 
but uh, this was the first one. This is edited. I want to like find the original to get more of my statements because I know I edited some stuff out because I didn't want to offend people, but I'm like, just to get, so you can know more where it's really coming from. I was like, maybe I should have just kept that more raw. But um, it's been a long journey and thank you for watching this video, watching any of them, or if you've gotten to the end of this, congratulations. But um, just keep watching my web uh, website. It's going to keep changing. and um, This is going to probably disappear soon, but I mean, I'm still going to have access to it. But this is my older website. And so I'm going to, my next goal uh, is just to put more, all the information about um, Lucian Foster's work is super fascinating and just his journal entries I think I spent hours studying Wilfred Woodruff's journal entries to figure out um, did I oh and I found like the original advertisement I believe is on my website I just I found so many whoops clicked on the wrong thing there see where that went where Lucy and Foster if I don't have that on there I better get that on there but I did find the original um, newspaper advertisement for Lucy and Foster sorry if I'm gonna be really boring right now in this second yeah I think I, I need to put that on here but just all these newspapers are scanned online it wouldn't be right there Um, yeah, I'll get that up there and just talk all about Lucy and Foster, but I mean, his studio didn't open until August 1844, but, um, but he was there since April and he had all of his stuff. He could have taken a photo. So some of these naysayers have gotten really loud after I talked to some people and that was just kind of like, eh. So I've had some negative videos, I'm sorry about that, but I was just kind of like, hey, <laughs> let's be nice. I know I've talked to you, and I don't agree with you, um, but they're just adamant that there never was a photograph of Joseph Smith. But there are scholars that have read everything they've read that are literally in documentaries saying that they think there is a photograph of Joseph Smith. Just unfortunately, they think it's the scandal daguerreotype, which I've looked at, and he has like a receding chin, and just so many things that just don't match up to the death mask that I've seen. But yeah, so anyway, I'll just kind of end this here. I do have it right there. Okay, good. I did put that on there. I just spent days and days working on this. It's actually, and so if you click on this, you're gonna need to go. I think if I remember it, because I spent a long time looking, you had to go to the end, because it's the end. So how many pages? One, two, three, I think it's this fourth page. I took a screenshot of it, I just haven't pulled it up. There we go. It is the fourth page in, but I do have the link to that. And so they've scanned these newspapers and you can see, you know, plain, either in plain or colored on Main Street, so they, they would paint over it. Um, and so that Hiram Smith picture, I don't create, dedicate anything to that. It just, it was a dead end, but I mean, I was sure and I'm still sure that the, the real one is the Joseph F. picture, not the fake photoshopped one of Hiram that has hard edges and things that are typical of something being photoshopped in the 90s, <laughs> specifically in the 90s. Um, but they, he already has specimens seen, and of course he was practicing, you know, an image, and he explains what it is, one or two, three miniatures, but this is Lucian Foster, and then you've got Cannon on the East Coast, he's the only one that the saints talk about, because he came to Utah, and so he took a lot of pictures of early saints, even in the 1840s, because he came over pretty Quickly. Well, no, I think it was 1850s, actually, when he showed up. I think it was 1849 with, when Wilfred Woodruff went to 
uh, Massachusetts, but anyway. But he's just talking about it being a likeness obtained. Um, anyway, there had been known demand. Sorry that that's missing. Other than that, this is still a really good scan of it. Only two or three minutes are required, so at that point it didn't take super long to do the daguerreotype. didn't take forever. And some of them, so Wilfred Woodruff had one that came out really blurry wearing the same outfit, and then the one that's online that the church has came out clear, so I think he just sort of was like, here you go, you know, this one didn't turn out well, didn't care where it ended up. Anyway, just kind of reading through that a few times here, but, but they were saying specimens can be seen at the rooms. Price is only $3, including a handsome Moroccan case. Easy. So, um, but he's also giving instructions. So this is August 10th, but um, this actual newspaper article, it was um, August 21st, but I think he was already advertising before then. So, yeah, and it's just super fascinating to, like, read the history and to read their advertisements to see how advanced they were in technology and stuff. But anyway, I'll kind of, it's still a super long video. I still get sucked into this, and I'm so fascinated by all, all the details. So, something super condensed and short with not all the supportive evidence, and maybe, hopefully, maybe, we can get something out there, but, um... I've worked really hard on this, you know, and this website's going to expand. So in this video, I think I'll give you a link to my old website. I don't know if it's, I guess it's still up where you can just read more about Lucy and Foster, but I think I, it is important that I throw this in here because that isn't, just a lot of evidence there. Okay, I just think looking at the background, like I was saying, I think the evidence, agreeing with Gaw and Weaver, that the background of my picture doesn't match J.S. Bibbins' original work. And, and kind of like, you know, we know Cannon's background was like this. It was white, though. Some of his pictures were white, but this is, you've got this angle going down right that. So if I show you side by side with Emma's carte de visite that they believe was done by Lucy Foster. I mean, Joseph Smith III remembered that name, you know, he knew who he was. But they took this out and they you see that oval and so in her original you're not really seeing much of that background so it's hard to see with Wilford Woodruff stuff but I think if I could find one where they took it out of the case we could see if that background how consistent that is but it's not level it's draped on something it's got a sheen on it on the background this is a sort of a shiny background this is also is this background doesn't look like anything Jess Bibbins had uh, he actually, I don't think he was a photographer that long, to be honest. But, um, I don't think J.S. Bibbins was a photographer in the 40s, but this guy is wearing 40s. He's wearing clothes that I've seen Joseph Smith Jr. wear, and people have said that he'd worn. He, you still have his vest. He wore that. That's what we believe. So, just looking at her picture, it's super fascinating, but her original looks really dark and I think that just explains why there's just photos of the painting but you don't expect the original daguerreotype or picture to perfectly match the painting I mean there's gotta be some similar I do think he edited it a little bit but he didn't do a whole new painting because otherwise Junius F. Wells or Morris Young and all these people that claim to have seen Carter's picture and seen the original and known that they look very very similar you know that there would, they would have been, oh, this is totally different. They're like, no, they recognized it. And they heard the story that it was David Rogers, that it was from life. Joseph Smith III said it was from life. Junius F. Wells said it was from life. Not post-mortem. And so, again, William B. McCarl just didn't have access to the testimony that supports Junius F. Wells. The son of Joseph Smith, the one that even talked about all this. So, anyway, that's it. Have a good day.